all. Hello, class. Today, what we want to focus on is three key ideas. We want to focus on identifying the domain and range of a function. So we want to look at graphs and be able to identify what the domain and range of those functions are. We also want to look at what the y-intercept of a graph is and how can we find the y-intercept of a graph. And then also what we want to do today is also find zeros of a function. So let's first look at what we want. To first, let's focus on finding the domain and range of a function. So, what is the domain of a function? And they are all the x values that exist for a function or graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a graph and find out all the x values that exist there, and that's part of your domain. Now for range, what we want to look at for range is all the y values that exist for a function or graph. So I want to look vertically up or down and say, all right, what values exist for that function? So let's look at an example right here. So what we're looking at first is we want to find the domain of the function. Now remember, domain deals with what's happening this way. Okay, As I read the graph left to right, what happens? So as I read the graph left to right, I notice nothing exists until this point right here. Right at 2 the x value starts to exist, or negative 2, the x value starts to exist. So I know that negative 2 is my starting point, and it keeps on going until 6. So what do I know? Is that x, the x values are existent between negative 2 and 6. Now it does exist at negative 2, so I'm going to say it's less than or equal to x, and I know that x is smaller than 6, so I'm going to write less than 6. Now let's look at trying to identify the range of a function. So when I look at range, that means I'm looking up or down. What's happening vertically? When I look at things vertically, I notice that it's, it does not exist until I get to 0. So I notice that it starts at 0, and then it keeps on going up until the y value of 4. So what can I say is that y is between 0 and 4. Now, does it exist at 0, at the y value of 0? Yeah. So I could put it's less than or equal to, and I know it goes all the way up to 4, so it's going to be less than or equal to 4. So the domain was negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6, because it started at the x value of negative 2 and it ran all the way to the value of 6. For range, it's 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 4, because the y value starts to exist at 0, and it goes all the way up to 4. So let's look at another example right here. So, I'm looking at domain first. Remember, domain deals with ha what happens left to right. Okay? So what I notice is that when I look at things left to right, nothing exists up until the x value of negative 4. And it keeps on going until an x value of 2. So I notice that x is between negative 4 and 2. Now, it doesn't exist at each of those points. What I'm going to say so far is that x, negative 4, is less than x, which is less than 2. So it's going from the x value of negative 4 all the way to the x value of 2. Now, I also notice that it keeps on going past the x value of 2. So what I'm going to say is that x is also larger than 2, because all these x values are larger than 2. So the domain is negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 2, because it runs from the x value of negative 4 all the way to the x value of 2. It takes a break, that's what those open circles mean, and then all the x values that are larger than 2 exist as well. So let's look at the idea of range. So when I look at the range, I'm going up or down. I'm going vertically. Okay? 
So what I notice is that it's really existent when it's really small. Okay? But that's also to a specific point of a y value of negative 1. So what I notice is that all the y values that are smaller than negative 1 exist. So what I will say is that y is less than negative 1 because all the y values that are smaller than negative 1 exist for this graph. When I'm going down, I go from negative 1 all the way down to negative infinity, it exists. I also notice that when I look at the y value of 5, it exists as well. So what I would say is that it's also y equals 5. So the range is from negative 1 all the way down, y is less than negative 1, and y equals 5 because it exists at that specific y value. Let's do one more example here. So I'm looking at domain and range for this function. So let's look at domain. So when I look at the domain, I'm looking at things this way. Now usually when we have arrows, that means that this is extending. And as it's extending down, it's also going to the left. So I notice that there's a lot of x values that are really small that exist. Now, is there a point in time that they stop to exist? It looks like right at this x value right here, this graph stops. So what's true about that x value? Well, that x value is looks like it's 3. So when I compare x to 3, what's true about all the x values compared to 3? Well, there's nothing past the x value of 3. There's nothing on this side but all the values are smaller than 3. So what I'm going to say is that x is less than or equal to 3 because all it does exist at 3, and everything smaller than it exists as well. So let's look at range. Range deals with what's happening up or down. So when I look at this function, do I notice when it starts to exist or when it doesn't exist? Well. This arrow, like we talked about, is pointing down, so it looks like there's a whole lot of small values that exist for it. And is there a point that it stops to exist? Well, it looks like right up here at the y value of 2, we have two little humps here, which tells me that I think it stops right there. So what I'm going to say is that y value is 2. So when I compare all the y values compared to 2, I know it's less than or equal to 2. I encourage you guys, if you don't understand what we just talked about with domain and range, maybe try to listen to that section again. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and look at the y-intercept of a function. So when we look at finding y-intercepts, well, what is a y-intercept? It's where the graph intersects the y-axis. And an easy way to find the y-intercept is you could substitute 0 in for x and solve for y. So that's what we're going to focus on right here. Like you can notice right here, is your y-intercept, because so we're asked to look at the graph and try to approximate its y-intercept. It looks like the y-intercept is 0, 4. That's what the y-intercept looks like when I look at the graph. Well, let's try to find it algebraically. So like we said, we're going to plug 0 in for x. So we're really doing f of 0, because that's what the x value of the y-intercept is. So I'm doing 0 cubed plus 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 4. Well, what happens? It looks like everything cancels except the 4, so f of 0 is 4, so my y-intercept is 0, 4. Pretty, not too bad. So let's look at this next example right here. It looks like I can't really approximate what that value is because I really don't know what it is, but it looks like it's between 2 and 4, okay? Maybe between 2 and 3, actually, because 3 is in the middle. So let's try to find it algebraically. So where the y, what the y-intercept is, is where x equals zero, 0. So we're going to plug 0 in for x. So we're doing h of 0 equals the square root of 0 squared plus 6. So we're doing h of 0. That's going to be 0, square root of 0 plus 6. So it looks like h of 0 is the square root of 6. So my y-intercept is 0, square root of 6. Let's do one more example. So right here, we're trying to find out what the y-intercept is. It looks like, once again, it's at 0, 4. So let's try to prove it algebraically. We plug in 0 
in for x. So we're doing 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 4. So when I do f of 0, I get 4. So once again, my y-intercept is 0, 4. So just remember, the easy way to find the y-intercept is we're just going to plug 0 in for x and solve for y. Okay? So let's look at zeros. Zeros is also known as the x-intercept, so it is where the graph intersects the x-axis. So to find the x-intercept of a function, all we have to do is substitute 0 in for y and solve for x. So what we want to do is we want to find the x-intercept here. So what we're going to do is set this equation equal to 0. So we have 3x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8x. So what we're going to do is just factor it out. So I have x, 3x squared minus 10x plus 8. Okay? So we want to find out what the x-intercept is. It looks like there's three of them. One of them looks like it's at 0, 0. One looks like it's at 2, 0. And somehow in between 1 or 2 it is. So let's try to find it. So we can factor this quantity out. You guys can do build a bridge, split the middle. I'm just going to do guess and check. And I know it's going to be 3x um, x plus 2 or x minus 2, s plus negative 2, x mm, minus 4. So this f is the factored out portion of that, and I set each quantity equal to 0. x equals 0, 3x minus 4 equal to 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So it looks like x equals 4 thirds, and x equals 2. So my solution, my x-intercepts are 0, 0, 4, f 4 thirds, 0, and then 2, 0. So it says 3x-intercepts, and if you look at the graph, you should notice that. Let me do one more example right here. So number 2, we looked at defining the f trying to find out what the x-intercept is. It looks like it's kind of negative something. So let's try to find out what it is. So we're going to do 0 equals the square root of 4t plus 1. So I want to solve for t, so I'm going to square both sides. So I have 0 equals 4t plus 1. We get 4t equals negative 1. So t looks like t equals negative 1 fourth. So it looks like the x-intercept is negative 1 fourth 0. I encourage you guys to do the next problem. We will go over this in class, um, but you guys have a good weekend.